to full face, bright eyed. I mean, no signs that he'd struggled to make the weight. What he's doing, he's struggling to find the range at the moment, but he's making Frotch work. That's better stuff. Again, more positive looking work from Johnson, which is a problem Frotch is going to have to deal with. Frotch jabbing nicely at range, but Johnson, you can see exactly what the tactics are. Self evident as he comes forward looking for that overhand right that Johnny Nelson was telling you about before the fight began. And Barry McGuigan, and here he is looking to start to pile on the pressure on Frotch. Frotch under pressure. Now, I think the work that you're going to remember at the end of the second round came from Glenn Johnson. So, a bit more urgency required. I think uh, Carl Frotch is going to have to get off that back foot. Countering this guy it may not be his best option. Maybe take the initiative a little bit more. That was blocked. Left hand from Frotz did get through the body shot. Johnson, who's so often been the underdog in his career, unfashionable sort of fighter at times, but he just kept persevering and didn't do too badly in that second round. Starting to warm up here. We've got a week to find everything we need for our pop-up shop. It's in London and we're in the Hebrides. Right, E7, do your thing. Oh, you can really smell uh, the honey coming I up. Know. Lovely. Would you be happy for us to take a few of your chairs? It will fit in really well with that stock we've got already. Oh, look at the pretty bikes. <laughs> it's coming together. It is coming together. Hold on a minute. The vegetable orchestra. What? <laughs> After two kilometres, turn right. I think we might just do this. He thinks all there is is a jab to the body, but when you sneak that right hand, when you feel comfortable, it's going to be this. Gonna Johnson out. certainly had his moments in that second round, Jim. Yeah, as I say, the, 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 the work right, you the remember from the round was a couple of bursts and when he from panics, Johnson. Uh, uh, don't fall in. Right, so maybe so look, just a little bit cagey, maybe he wants to take the initiative a little bit more off that back foot. Step in, use the jab as a weapon, as opposed to just fending Johnson off with it. Into the third round. The WBC super middleweight title at stake. The belt carried into the ring by Carl's brother Lee, his other brother Wayne also at ringside, and of course his partner Rachel. Frotch is taking jabs, which is surprising. I thought it would be the right hand that we'd have to worry about, but trading jabs there, and Johnson doing okay. Johnson coming forward, trying to be seen to be the man who's the aggressor. That's better from Frotch though. Frotch is going to have to discourage this fellow with the jab, put punches to galleries. Just a little bit disjointed looking at the moment, Frotch. Being pressurised, which surprises me. Well, he's showing a lot more movement and a lot more aggressive attempt than Arthur Abraham did, Johnson. Remember, he got to this stage of the uh, competition, came in as a substitute and had a terrific win over Alan Green. Frotch trying to use his mobility, picking his man off and then stepping away out of range. Frotch is, is throwing good punches now, but of quality into the shots. But he is, he is looking as though he's being bullied. There's a big right hand from Johnson. Crowds responding as the action really starting to heat up here in the third round. And Johnson, remember, used to fighting much bigger men than Carl Frotch. Frotch throwing better quality shots now, I'm glad to say. But he's been manoeuvred, he's been pushed back. Andre Ward, Jim, said to me, forget what the odds makers are saying, and Carl Frotch, in some quarters, I'm told, was a 5-1 to one on favourite. Forget all that. When it gets up in there against somebody as experienced and hard as Johnson, it's a hard fight to pick. Yeah, and Carl Frotch likes to dictate the pace of a fight. He's not been allowed to do that here tonight. His punches certainly have improved in quality, which is required. You can't pop punches with this fellow. You have to discourage him. But Frotch not really being allowed to set up anything that looks solid looking. Frotch trying to use his mobility. Johnson again being seen as the aggressor trying to get in close and the referee Earl Brown just having to split them as he does again. Frotch is looking a little bit uncomfortable as I say the punching we're seeing from is better but he's going to have to start meeting 
Johnson in the centre of the ring, not be pushed back. Close rounds are liable to go with the aggressor. That took from Johnson, but Crutch also landing purposeful punches. Two of them starting to load up more. Carl Frotz never seems to be in a dull fight, Jim. So many of them are turned into real gruelling tests. And here he is getting words of advice from Robert McCracken. I just think he's been made to look uncomfortable in the last couple of rounds. I think he's going to have to stand his ground a little bit more and meet Johnson being pushed back and really being forced out of defence. We're seeing close rounds and there's a good chance the judges are going to be seeing them against him if he doesn't look a little bit more positive. Jamaican-born Glenn Johnson on the front foot again as Frotz tries to spear him with that long left-hand lead. I mean, all the pressure is on Carl Frotz here tonight. He's the one expected to win. He's facing a 42-year-old man, and we all have a tremendous respect for him. But a lot of pressure, and still, I'd like to see Frotz step forward with the punches. Try not easy to push Johnson back, but meet him head on, especially with that solid jab. Glenn Johnson employed a specialist conditioner for this. Took some 20 pounds off in order to get down to this fighting weight. Did it, we're told, by eating more often, eating the right things. Something which in the past he'd not really done. He'd done it the uh, old-fashioned way of just boiling down. This time it's altogether more scientific. Roach timing his jab a little bit better. But still reacting to what Johnson is doing when maybe he should be just making that first move. I've got enormous, better. got enormous respect for Carl Frotz, as indeed he has, I think, throughout the boxing business, hasn't he, for his ability to take on these tough opponents and the way in which he's found a way of winning the contests. With the one exception of the fight against Mikel Kessler and Carl, I know, feels that had that fight been in Nottingham and not in Denmark, it might have been a different story when it came to the judges' cards. But this is better from Frosch, bringing the right hand into play a little bit more. I mean, he's been prodding with the jab as, a fo as opposed to snapping out, but he's bringing the right hand into play now, which is better. He's going to have to hit this fella with solid punches. He's going to have to stop that march forward that Johnson has. I like him better in this round. Timing his shot is better. He started to put them together a little bit more. Penny for the thoughts of... Clinton Wood, who of course, uh, Clinton Woods, who had the three fights against Glenn Johnson, the draw, the loss, and then finally the win. Glenn Johnson wins tonight. I wonder if he'll fancy coming out of retirement. This is better from Frotch. Much better. Now that he's bringing his right hand into play, he's, he'll be impressing the judges. In rounds two and three, he was back and off. He looked uncomfortable. He's still on the move, but that was far better quality. This is more of what what you see. No, but you have to be busy with this man. You cannot box single shots, do nothing, all right? You can't this afford to do single you. shots, Robert McCracken oh. saying. Let's be busy with him. Yeah, well, pretty much what we've been saying from here. Don't bring the right hand the into play and press the judges Make and sure stop this fellow's match move. forward. Sure he's into up. the fight, though, now, isn't he? It's as though he's uh, up, at last started to settle into it now, Carl Frotch. Good yeah, round, that last one. He's best so far. He's maybe coming in thinking I'll, I'll win the first couple of rounds with a jab. Maybe he's come in with a 12-round plan. But the jab wasn't positive enough in the early stages. Now he's been forced into a fight and uh, we know how he'll respond. Johnson marching forward once more. Most of those jabs from Frotch being taken on the gloves, but the right hand did get through. Left hand was low from Frotch, and the referee spots it, and he's going to say something. But they've both been warned. He just warned uh, Johnson a couple of seconds before, so that should even out. Don't worry about points just yet. 
Greater variety now coming from Crotch. Highlighted beforehand that the uppercut could be a good punch for him in this fight, and the right hand was fired in in this round. That's the right from Johnson, though. That's the danger shot. Well, what is it about Fry? There's an uncomfortable look about his boxing. You know, he's not looking controlled. Good body shot he was forced to take there. Comes back with a decent uppercut himself. You know, he's not been allowed any chance to produce smooth boxing. He's been harried and pressurised by Johnson. See, Johnson's such an old pro, old school, he knows exactly how to take away another fighter's assets. And he knows how to pace himself. Frotch, as ever, has had a really good quality sparring in the run-up to this contest. Back home in Britain against Kenny Anderson and then in New York against the likes of Peter Quillen, an undefeated young prospect from New York State. So he's put the rounds in, he's done the work, but Johnson, as we suspected, as long as this fight goes, showing that even at the veteran stage of his career, a real handful. Well, what you have to worry about is Johnson's dictating the pace, he's making Crotch work at a pace he's not all that comfortable with, and in the tw over the 12-round distance, that could be a problem for Crotch, but he's bringing the right hand in now. Looking the part, delivering quality punches, I don't see the same quality in Johnson's work. More snap from Frost, throwing more punches. But being forced to work, he's not doing it by choice. See, right hand really working well. That's what we want to see. Really good right hand punching from Carl Frost. Heavy punches here from Frost, landing on the target. And for the first time, you sense that Johnson just being discouraged a little and wanting to cover up as Frotch is looking now to dictate and to show that he's the power puncher in there. Now, there's a different quality in Frotch's punching. Still, at times, he looks uncomfortable. But this is good, as we've seen him tonight. The confidence is back. Well, another good round from Frotch. Took some time to measure himself into this contest but now he's starting to find his target now picking some beautiful right hands see you have to hit hard enough to discourage this fellow this fellow will march forward all night long so in the early rounds Frotch was popping with that jab but it's more of a weapon now and the right hand is so important that's the punch that's stopping Johnson in his tracks stopping him from really setting anything up I think they've both been warned at the moment for low punches Good referee, does his little chats between rounds, doesn't stop the action, and the action's good. Interesting fight, and the way we've scored it at ringside, Carl Frotch, after a fairly uncertain sort of start, now right back in it, and starting to look like the champion he is. So the sixth round. And Frotch starts fast. British fans responding every time Frotch finds the target. And there's a fair few who've made their way here tonight. See, this is draining the way Johnson keeps coming forward forcing Frotch to work, Frotch looking down to his corner which you don't always like to see this early in a fight but he's realised he has to bring his right hand 